Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another Tops and Flops video because it's the end of the month, well almost one day left tomorrow. But I don't think I will finish anything um, today or tomorrow that will have any impact on the Tops and Flops. And for those of you who might not be familiar, each month I look back at my reading and then I choose the three books that I think were you know, the top reads for one reason or the other, and uh, two that were mm, not so good. Flops, in other words. And as always, we start with the tops, and within oh, tops, <laughs> and within the tops, we start with the book that I thought about the most. And that was a novel by Carol Shields, um, published in 2002, Unless. Uh, Carol Shields uh, was a Canadian author, and this was her last book. She died a year after publication, sadly, quite young, from my perspective. I'm 60, so... <laughs> anyway, Unless was the book that I thought about the most. It is a novel um, about a 44-year-old woman, uh, Rada um, Winters, who writes... Uh, she's a writer and a translator, and she writes... Um, yeah, light fiction, and she translates um, a certain work by a certain, a certain author who is still alive, whom she admires very much, especially memoirs. Um, she lives with her husband and three daughters uh, outside of Toronto, and the book opens when an event had taken place. Her oldest daughter, Noah, uh, Nora, um, all of a sudden dropped out of college, or at least that's what you think at the beginning of the book, all of a sudden dropped out of college and started begging in the streets, living on the street or in a homeless shelter in Toronto. She's up at the same um, street corner every day, holding up a, 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 a yeah a poster thingy, something um, which says goodness. Um, so the, 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 the story that then Carol Shields uh, tells us is of course, about the the mother and the father uh, trying to find out what happened uh, to the daughter and bring her back home, uh, as it were. But most of the book explores um, Rada um, Winter's life as a writer, as a female writer, as a mother, uh, uh, a wife, um, and as a woman more in general during that time. So it, it's set in, in, in present day, so not, not historical fiction. Uh, I read this together with Adam, whom some of you might know because he was formerly known as a booktuber called Memento Mori, but he doesn't make videos anymore, unfortunately. But he still reads, and he sometimes even buddy reads with me. Um, and we both uh, very much enjoyed the book. I think I definitely liked it more than Adam did. A Adam liked it, and I really loved it. Partly, I have to say, of course, because it really resonated with me personally. As you know, or might know, I'm also a writer, and some of the encounters that um, um, she, the Carol Shields describes in the book uh, with editors who have quite different ideas about your book, or uh, with publishers and uh, interviews, and that, that was just very funny to me and very true. Um, because as a female writer, you are still, you know, you are a female writer, not a writer, because a writer means a male writer. But anyway, so I thought that that was really well done. I, I could, um, yeah, I could picture this woman and of course the story also why, what happened to the daughter and why was interesting. But for me, the core, why I thought about this book really a lot um, was the personal aspect of it. So I'm well aware that this might not work for um, everybody out there, but for me, um, I really it really made me think uh, what it means for me to be a writer and uh, what it means to navigate this still quite male-dominated world, even though they are most of people who read are women, um, and there are a lot of um, other female writers. Don't get me wrong, I'm, it's not like we are 
you know, <laughs> some sort of very small group, but still. So for for this reason alone, and I love the language. I mean, I love Carol Shields' way of telling a story, especially focusing on female life. I, I absolutely adored Stone Diary. Uh, Stone Diaries. I recently finished um, uh, a short story collection, Various Miracles, which I also really uh, enjoyed. So Carol Shields and I, her work and, and, and my mind, we, we gel. And this one was certainly the, the book in August that I thought about the most with a little cheat, because actually I finished it, if I remember correctly, the last day of July. So, but hey, you know, what does it matter? For me, it counts for August and it, it deserved a place in, in the tops for the book I thought about the most. Next up in the top is the book that surprised me the most. And that was Vieto Moore's debut novel, She Would Be King, published two years ago in 2018. I read this together with Heidi from My Reading Life. Um, and this w was a joy in an by itself, of course, reading a book together with Heidi is always great. We had quite a rough patch <laughs> with regard to fiction. Uh, we had a couple of really fantastic buddy reads nonfiction, but the fiction picks we had uh, were not uh, were not so good in the, the last couple of months. So that was one reason why I entered this book with kind of trepidation. I think we both did. The other reason was that I recently read Wyeto, Wyeto Moore's memoir um, and uh, the giant the Dragons, the Giant, the Women, uh, which came out in the summer of this year, and I didn't like it. I thought it was not very well done. It, the, the, the story was very interesting. Wayeto Moore is from Liberia, and she tells us the story of the Liberian Civil War um, in the 1980s, um, and her uh, she she found refu refuge together with her family in the U.S. So the, the subject matter interested me, but I didn't think it was done that well. So I had kind of, oh, I don't know, but I have really, really loved this book. Um, despite the fact that that was the third trepidation, that it has a lot of magical realism in it. And if you're following me, you know that magical realism and me mostly it doesn't really go well. Uh, but this this one was fantastic. Um, it's set in the 19th century and it tells in a way uh, the formation of Liberia as the first uh, independent um, state in Africa um, for, by and run by black people. Um, the story is told from various perspectives, and the main character is a young woman, a girl, when the book opens, uh, Bessa, um, who is uh, considered a witch in her village. She is uh, of the Lai tribe, and she's considered a witch, so she's expelled from the village, left in a cave to die, uh, but she has magical powers. She can't die, so she is... she or. In a way, the way the book tells it is she dies and then she uh, is resurrected in a way. Um, she teams up uh, with a couple of other uh, black people, um, an ex-slave from Virginia, uh, uh, somebody from Jamaica, um, and they form a sort of trio, but... That's what the blurb said. Together they will fight for, you know, the foundation of Liberia. That's not entirely true because the other two uh, characters um, are uh, June Day and Norman. They are rather side characters, sidekicks. So the main focus is really on Bessa and on other women surrounding these three main characters. And I loved it. I mean, I learned a lot, uh, and I said that, I think, in, even in my previous video, if a book tells a great story with engaging characters, and I can also learn something, then it's a fantastic combination. So, I, yeah, I really in, enjoyed it much more than I thought I would, because, you know, I explained why I had some hesitations. So, this book, Why She, uh, she Would Be King, uh, was definitely the 
very joyful surprise of August. And as always, the last book in the tops is the best nonfiction read uh, of the month. And even though I again in August read quite a bit of nonfiction and most of it was really good, there was no doubt in my mind that the top uh, the, for the for this video, the, the top nonfiction read in August was White Rage uh, by Carol Anderson, published in 2016. And it was another buddy read, another very successful buddy read, this time with Kathleen from Kathleen Ann, who already reviewed uh, the book, and I will leave a link to her review down below. And we both, both thought the book was excellent. And you probably, either you've read it already or you, or, or you at least heard of it, um, and I can only recommend this, the, the highest recommendation, because I thought this was so illuminating. Um, maybe I should tell you what the book is about if you haven't heard about the book. Uh, so Carol Anderson is a professor of African-American studies, um, and this book um, uh, tells the story about... Um, the racial di racial discrimination of black people um, from the end of the Civil War, so the mid-1865, uh, let's say, uh, until uh, the present day. And she focuses on giving us a quite detailed account of how uh, white supremacy uh, works in the United States. So we get um, the... Uh, after slavery was abolished, uh, what kind of laws were then in made and uh, 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 either reinstated or newly made in order to keep black people suppressed? Uh, you've all heard of the G Jim Crow era and the Jim Crow laws, but it, it's much broader than that. And it didn't end with uh, the civil rights movement in the 20th century. So the, 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 the facts that she one after the other um, uh, puts in front of you, for me at least, really explained something about race relations in the US and how it was, like Kathleen said at one point when we discussed the book, in fact, uh, black people are still slaves, just different. You know, you had Jim Crow and then you have mass incarceration, you had the war on drugs, you have um, the, for instance, the difference how uh, powder cocaine, cocaine and crack co cocaine are punished um, if you are a user or a distributor. And how that all comes together, it was f fascinating, but not in a good way, if you know what I mean. But it m really made me understand the depth uh, of racism uh, in the U.S. And apart from that, it's also really, really well written. So what I what I told you that it gives an overview also about the laws and a lot of court, some not a lot, but some court cases that might sound dry, but it isn't at all. Uh, Kel Anderson can really tell a story. She has um, the ability to combine facts with anecdotes, sometimes um, going a little deeper in a certain case to give you some, you know, um, yeah, as it were, personal uh, flavor of, of this case. So it's not um, an info dump of facts and laws and uh, not at all. It, it It's really well told. Uh, it's engagingly written and it is utterly frustrating to read it. But for me, uh, I think it was one of the, the best books to, to educate me and, and understand something about race uh, relations and racism in the US. If you have never read the book, I'm not, I can't even make a whole sentence because I'm so, uh, yeah, I, I think this book is so good. You should read it. It, it is absolutely fantastic. So these were my three top reads for the month of August onto the flops. I have two and two books that um, are widely recognized because they are both tied in with the Booker International. One even won the prize. And I'm talking about the Dutch book A Discomfort of Evening by Marike Lucas Reinefeld, uh, translated from the Dutch by Michelle Hutchison, which just last Tuesday won the Booker International 2020. 
and I thought it wasn't good. I didn't like it at all. Uh, Marike Lucas Reinefeld is a young, 29-year-old um, Dutch author, also a poet. Um, she identifies as non-binary, so I will use the pronoun they. Um, and they wrote poetry before, a poetry collection, which was also widely recognized. And you can definitely see that in the language, that uh, uh, Reinefeld is a poet. Um, but still, despite the poetic um, influence or poetic writing, the book didn't work for me at all. Um, it is quite a slim novel uh, set in uh, Holland in a, uh, on the countryside in a very um, orthodox, conservative part of Holland. Um, and we focus on a family of farmers in this village. And the story is told by Jas, um, the 10-year-old uh, daughter uh, of the family. They have uh, four children. Uh, and Jas is 10 when the book opens, I should say, and 12 uh, when the book ends. Um, there is not a surprise because that's on the blurb. There's a family tragedy um, that is the center of the book. One of the children, the eldest um, uh, son, uh, dies in an accident. And then the story develops from there, the, the, how the family, and especially Yas and her two uh, uh, other siblings, but also the parents, deal with grief. That sounded interesting. And I featured the book in the August uh, TBR because it was in the English uh, translation was just published. Uh, the Dutch original was published in 2017. But it didn't work for me at all. First of all, you know, if you know me, that I have difficulties with uh, child narrators, always. And especially like in this book, when I feel that a 10-year-old girl talks, thinks, acts like an adult most of the time. That never works for me. So that that was a big grief um, that I, I just, I couldn't believe the character. I thought it was completely unbelievable what she thought about and um, what she, how she acted or how she reacted to certain things. I couldn't picture a 10 year old girl. It got a little better because towards the end she's 12 and then, you know, you're almost a teenager. So, but still that, that, yeah, it just didn't didn't work. Um, there's a lot of violence in the book, which I thought was gratuitous at at uh, a certain point, just to shock. Uh, didn't really. There was no arc in in that. It was just there. Didn't work for me, and it is really gross. And that becomes kind of yeah, gross to read, but also boring. If everything that this child narrator encounters or sees is compared to some form of snot or bile or vomit or poop, it's boring. So no, it uh, unfortunately, it, it didn't work for me at all. And the second flop uh, was also translated fiction, uh, Fernanda Melchior, Hurricane Season, translated from the Spanish by Sophie Hughes. And it, this book was also on uh, the Booker International shortlist. And this was one of the buddy reads with Heidi that didn't work for either of us because we both didn't like the book. The book is set in Mexico and the central character is um, the witch um, who, that's not an, a spoiler, you, it, it happens right in the beginning and it's also said on, said, say so on the blurb, the witch is killed. She's found dead and obviously murdered. And then you get um, various voices in this tiny village in Mexico, very impoverished village. Um, and slowly you find out through these different voices what happened uh, to the witch and why she was killed and by whom. Um, I What didn't work for me again was uh, gratuitous violence. The book is also, like the previous book, very violent. And don't get me wrong, I can handle violence in books. Hey, I read I read Kathy Acker recently, Bloods and Guts in High School, which is one violent incident after the other, but it made sense because the violence 
told a certain story. There was a message behind the violence. And here it just it just wasn't, I felt. Plus the characters were so for me, they came across so cliched. All the women, um, you know, were, were portrayed in a certain way. All the men did. All the men. They just treated women really badly and they drank. At the beginning, uh, in the beginning, I thought, oh, this is good. But then it deteriorated after two or three chapters. It really deteriorated for me because I was bored bored by the sameness of it all, bored by the lack of a story arc or some sort of development, either in characters or in stories. I basically kept reading just because I was curious who killed the witch. And that is, in the end, just not enough. Here you go. These were my tops and flops of the month of August. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're all still safe and healthy and please stay that way. Looking forward, as always, you know, to your comments. I am behind again. I know that, but I'm still looking forward to your comments and I'll see you all soon in the next one.